talk to us about how your business model is different from some of the rest. You're more B2B than you are B2C, right? Yeah, absolutely. Caroline, thank you for, for having me on here today. For sure, our approach to, to tutoring is very different than a lot of the other companies that exist out there. We go directly to the school districts, partner with them, and that allows every student within their schools to get access to academic support. Traditionally, a lot of that support has been reserved for wealthier families. With us, we partner with the school district to allow every student that access. Where are you finding demand coming from at the moment? You're, in, you're based in Montreal right now. Prevalence in, in North America, largely? Yeah, our, our customers are, are almost all exclusively in the U.S. We have a strong presence on the coast, California, um, definitely the, the largest for us right now. We work with just over 100 school districts coast to coast. It's interesting that it's California school districts. Do you think that there's an, you know, we all associate technology with California. Is there an element that you see certain school districts more willing to embrace the move towards technology or is actually everyone now post-COVID? So I would have had a different answer for you a couple of years ago, but right now we're definitely seeing everybody really open to it. The last year has been really transformational for our education system, broadly speaking, and the academic support piece has really been highlighted just by the fact that students have been remote, back in school. There's so much change. It really identified the fact that there are a lot of students who just didn't have that support. So in the past, yeah, California, I mean, technology, obviously, California, there's a lot of syn like synonymousness there. But with us, I think we're seeing pa paper be something that's applicable to districts everywhere in the country now. It's been just, uh, it's been crazy to watch this over the last year. But Phil, how does post-COVID help or hinder to a certain extent? I feel like some people never want to have their children on a Zoom again. It was just all too much, too fast, too thick. How much will we get a balance of still technology within the education process? Uh, I think the devices that have been purchased by districts, and when you look at what was happening pre-COVID to, to today, pre-COVID, 60% of school districts were one-to-one -one devices. So that meant a computer, a laptop, um, you know, iPad, whatever it may be for every student. By the time students returned to school in August, September last year, that number had risen to 95%. Mm. So billions of dollars were invested in hardware. The schools aren't gonna be asking students to hand in their laptops for textbooks. So I feel very strongly, this is just the beginning of a trend. We're really starting to see this evolution happen and it's happening quite rapidly. And rapid growth in companies, all in ed tech. I mean, Paper, of course, yourself, Quizlet, Chegg, Course Hero, Brainly, all of them with slightly different business models. I'm interested, Phil, in, in what you think makes yours different from another company that might come along and want to, well, serve the school districts too. Yeah, look, I mean, the space definitely is having a moment right now. We've seen in the last week uh, Duolingo, Instructor filing their S1s. So there's a lot of movement, especially within the, some of these businesses that had been venture backed and you know, may not have necessarily had the exit velocity that you would have typically seen in other areas. We're seeing that now in education, which is exciting. In our particular model, by partnering with the school districts, it really is an equity play for them and you know, for everybody within the community. A lot of the businesses you mentioned, they're focusing either going directly to the consumers, which has typically been the popular model for tutoring in the past, or they're partnering with teachers or schools at like an individual level, not necessarily the school district. So we focus more on partnering at the district level and making sure every student within that community is supported by the tutoring that we provide. And this is something, again, it comes back to that notion of equity. Very quick on 30 seconds left. One way you're going, one thing you're going to announce, one thing you're going to develop, one thing you're going to scale. <laughs> There's a lot we have to be focusing on right now. I think for us, one of the really exciting things that we launched today is something called Camp Paper. So this is a summer offering for students to be able to actually participate in enriching summer experiences. It's all virtual, but for a lot of our customers, the school districts just don't have a ton of resources available to their communities during the summer. This is giving students the ability to learn something to stimulate their mind during the summer months. And this is, again, it's free of charge to all those families. So it's, it's again, an investment by the district into their communities. So we're excited about that.